Once again, we have this great privilege to meet here and again share the Word of God uh, this uh, afternoon. In the series of the Sermons of Hope, a number of messages uh, has, uh, we have received, a number of messages. And today I want to pick my sermon from the book of First Peter, chapter uh, 5, verses 8, which says, Be sober, be vigilant, uh, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I'll pick the topic just from the first two words, be sober, as what we will be sharing today. Now, with the aim to empower us for the service and prepare us to go, God has entrusted us with a number of blessings that we should take care of as stewards. The main uh, gift or blessings, I will call them the I will go gift. I will share about four of them. We have the blessings of good health. Surely, with a good health, I will go. We have the blessings of marriage and the families. With peace at home, I will go. We have the blessings of beauty and youthful life. With the youthful vigor, I will go. And with the blessings of wealth and riches, you can confirm that with good income, I will go. All of these blessings are intended to give us joy while we are down here and also to prepare us for the second coming of Christ. When God gave the blessings, he knows for sure that these blessings will give us some peace and joy down here, but again, ultimately lead us into a new, I mean, life in the new Jerusalem. Friends, however, it should be noted. That is where my focus is, that for any and every blessing God has given man, Satan works to reverse the same by stealing it or by stealing the joy that comes with the blessing. Get this. When God gives you a good marriage, Satan has one intention, either to steal the marriage or to pour, I will say pour, cold water in the marriage that ultimately you don't get the original intention of the gift as God had planned. I will say this, friends, when God gave Samson the power and privilege of life, Satan removed his eyes in a foreign land and killed him. Though a very, very strong man, he proved so weak. When God gave Solomon wealth, Satan knew very well that Solomon, who is a, a very rich and of course wise man, may not really, you know, uh, be fought easily, but Satan did add him what I would call a thousand vanities in the name of women. Of course, I'm not saying women are vanities. I'm simply saying that Solomon himself, to some one point when he was asked that friend, you have had some 700 uh, serious wives and some 300 concubines or side chicks. What is your take about them? And I see Solomon throw his hands and walk away and say vanity, vanity, and vanity. I'm saying, friend, now that we have decided to go, now that you are born again, now that you are married, now that you are a doctor, a medic, you know, an engineer, the enemy of man will not fight to convince you not to be to, not to be so or not to keep his commandments. He will attack other aspects of your life which are key to your spiritual well-being and the work to serve the Lord by attacking your wealth, your health, your family, and your marriage, your finances. The devil makes the God-given talents useless, and indeed, it could be a challenge to us. Many have lacked the will because Satan attacked their families. Many have lacked the zeal to preach because the devil frustrated their finances. Actually, many have refused to go because Satan reduced their youthful visions into nothing. I am simply saying that for us to go and serve, we must be sober and our sobriety has to be careful in protecting the God-given gifts and talents. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus said it well, that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The ultimate intention of Satan is to steal from us the gift 
of life eternal. I am saying this. When Satan comes and realizes that God has given me this gift, he will go around and attack your marriage, attack your health, attack your finances. His main intention is not so much to destroy you and make you die poor, but to also frustrate the God-given gift of life eternal. Many people may miss heaven just because Satan stole their marriage and their families. Many more may equally miss heaven because Satan took charge of their wealth and riches and threw them into great financial crisis, what we call the debt crisis. Many more others may still miss heaven because Satan destroyed their beauty, their health, their youthful visions and dreams, and they live a discouraged lot. Friends, a call to be sober is a call that we cannot ignore. The devil has given this generation of today a high materialistic and sensual taste. Two things which are reducing the world into, you know, a useless uh, state. Materialism and sensuality. Materialism and sensuality are what the people today see, think, talk, or in their daily life, and this is what destroys the world. Today, most people, both rich and poor, are trapped in financial debt because of high materialistic and sensual taste. Let me tell you, friends, that life in debt, or debt is one of the weapons Satan is using to destroy this generation. Be sober before you append your sign into some dead thing. Not all what you want is what you need as such. When one is in a financial crisis, I remember in our uh, uh, primary or high school life, we were told of how to manage bulls. There are big bulls that you could not pull easily. And they say that there is something called a bull ring where you will tie you, you can put the ring on the uh, bull's nose, and once the ring is there, any small rope tied to it, the bull will easily follow up as such. Even maybe a wind pushing or, or, or shaking the rope, the bull will follow. Why? Because of the pain there. So I will say, when you walk and allow yourself in a life of financial crisis, you seem to have put a ring in your nose and you lack the power of resistance and do anything your master tells you. A call to be sober is a call timely for us today. There are ladies, even in this meeting today, who are settling their financial bills, loans, etc., with the power of their skirt, not because they have not read the laws of God, but the pressure, the pain, and the push of financial crisis never allows them to obey the commandments of sanctity and walking uprightness. Debt, failed families, destroyed health, weakens our ability to go, and like a bird, we are trapped and hooded. I remember as a young boy, we were used to harvesting birds. And one of the very, very good examples I saw is this kind of arrangement where you pick a basket uh, or a bucket sort of and pour some cereals down there and place a stick, cover it there, then hide somewhere. Then once you see those birds come in and flock, you pull the rope and all of them are like covered down there. And what you'll simply do is to take some blanket, cover the basket or the bucket and, you know, put in your hand, pick one. And before you do anything, having gotten one bird, what you'll do is to break one part of the wing and the other and the leg, four parts wounded and broken, then the bird is just useless. You throw it down there, the bird is alive, strong, willing to fly, but the arms are weakened. I'm simply saying, friends, that with the weakening of our arms, our marriage arms, our financial arms, our health and social arms, we may have the good intention to fly. But once we are broken down that far, we will not go any far. Therefore, any Christian, any believer in this world today must choose to be sober and protect the God-given blessings. Satan does not just come to steal, kill, and destroy in Revelation 12, 12 says, he does it with speed because he has a very short time. Friends, if there is anybody here in this meeting 
Regarding us and following this kind of presentation, who is still in the field of Satan in any place, you need to hurry up lest you be trapped and finished by this enemy because he had a short time to work on you as such. Peter gives this generation today one of the best advice of this time, a call to sobriety. He says that the enemy is looking for one to devour. I looked at the simple meaning of devour in the English dictionary. It says to eat a prey hungrily and quickly. I can now understand why some people have lost their marriage, their family, their wealth, and their health that they have worked for, for 10 and 20 and 40 years and lost this in less than three months. Because this enemy, if he gets a space in your wallet, a space in your bedroom, a space in your stomach, he will not only just steal and kill, he will destroy it quickly and hungrily as the word devour means. I saw and read in the Kenyan newspaper, a young man who survived the primary life, very committed. High school was very committed. University, he was voted the best. Got some good job with international bodies, but just to choose to die by killing himself, jumping from 17th floor. I will save you, friends. The enemy never rests. You may overcome him in primary. You may overcome him in high school. You may overcome him in your college. You may even overcome him in your very wedding and marriage ceremony. But he keeps on jumping. The secret is to remain sober and walk with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This fake lion, which is the enemy of man, uses two powerful tricks, which I will share to destroy our blessings. The first trick I will call it, the trick of disguise and false impression. Now, just like in the Garden of Eden, Satan came as a beautiful and a very powerful creature. And, you know, the manner in which he expressed himself was such that all was well. Because it was pleasing to the eye, the body, the senses. Eve responded to Satan that, yes, it is right. It is not right to eat, we will die. But after a short while, the woman will confess that the food was good and pleasing. Satan comes to us today in the trick of disguise and false impression. But let me give you a small story that we did. Pastor Nyabuti, you can come. Just come. Uh, help me preach this sermon. You know, when we were young, we, 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 we used to play together. And, uh, you know, as boys, we would play together. Then a time will come that uh, you will find some, uh, some old boy in the village. Boy who ought to be in form one, but still is in class three. For whatever reasons, he knows himself. Then he will come and uh, ask you, young boys, how are you? And you say, you're fine. Okay. Now, who among you is the oldest? And since all children want to be the best, he will say, I. And then he says, me. Then uh, who among you has the first, uh, is the first one in running? Then you will shout, the one. Who among you, you know, has the strength than the other? Then ultimately, in his own confusion, he will lead us to prove who is stronger by we fighting. So we'll stop playing our games and now begin to fight. Occasionally, we will begin fighting like then we stand in this format. Pastor, you can stand like, like we used to do. No, you put one leg ahead. Okay, yeah, that's okay. And then you get these ones here. So since we have no problem, nobody annoyed the other. There is no pain and bitterness. We are only fighting because some big bad boy said that we take too long to begin fighting. We take too long and the guy will be very careful. He realizes that time will not allow us fight. So he will say, no, the first one now to step on each other's toe is the strongest. And that looks simpler. Then we will go ahead and step on each other, push each other. And because of the pushing and stepping, some bitterness comes and we begin fighting. In five minutes, we have fought, and then we get hold of each other, one with bleeding nose, some the other one with the bleeding teeth. Then when we walk home, you ask, uh, John, why are you fighting? You know, we are fighting because Peter said we should fight. No, there was no reason of fighting. Just because some boy in the village did incite us to fight. Friends, I want to say this, that the fight will leave us bleeding. Yet we did not have any single reason to fight. Have you ever wondered 
that a woman or a man you loved and worked for for many years today you can beat you can ignore you can shout you can cheat on it is not because something so much wrong has happened it is because the big bad boy satan has incited you against your own marriage satan knows what to do he has left our families bleeding because he told us that tithe and offering is very expensive. Today, people who should have invested their resources in heaven are destroying it and using it. But Satan said it is very expensive. Satan has left our health and beauty bleeding because he has told us that the only good thing in this world are sexual and sensual desires and the world is suffering as such. He has left our marriage believe, bleeding because he did cheat us that the wife you have and the husband you have is not the best one so you go for some side games which again ashames you he has left some homes bleeding because he has told them that your children your job your business is the best you can worship than god friends our call today is that you be sober and save the blessings that god has given you the next trick the enemy is using is the trick of ambush or attack at night i read a story you no know, i was told of a story a preacher did preach about west Pocot, that a family uh went to sleep and as usual i'm told that in west Pocot, the ladies are the ones who work on the roof so while they went to sleep it, in the midnight or so there were some signs of rain and the woman woke up and climbed the roof to try to reorganize it against the rain but the man who was sleeping had some commotion and just woke up from sleep without knowing and realized that this could not be a normal thing. He didn't even check the bed to confirm the wife. He concluded that this must be a very dangerous animal, the cheetah or the leopard. And in the process, he took the common uh, spears of that place and the arrows and made sure he did target right. And the old man did focus on the object in the roof and made sure it was right short. The noise he got was not of any animal, a noise of a woman confirming the wife was the one shot and the lady died. Friends, the man did not kill the woman that uh, he loved. He was killing an animal because of ambush at night or attack at night or the life of darkness. People have killed their best when we are asleep in social media, asleep in movies, asleep in parties. Some have shot their lives with death. When asleep in wealth and riches, some have shot their health and destroyed their business. When asleep in gossip and many, or many other lives of that sort, many have killed their peace at homes. When asleep in sports and betting, politics and all the kind of thing, many have lost their wealth. Remember, this gentleman had a good intention. But the problem was the life of darkness. We must therefore be sure that we don't live in darkness or we don't live a life of carelessness lest we kill our own. When I sleep in a youthful life, many have shot themselves with STIs, abortion, and wanted pregnancies and shame. There is need for us friends to remain sober. A call to sobriety is a call we must heed for us not only to enjoy the life today, but to preserve our gift of life eternal. For us to effectively move as Christians, as fathers, as preachers, as engineers, we must be sober. For us to be good stewards and safeguard our marriage and family, we have to be sober. For us to keep the gift of life eternal, we have to be sober. Friends, Sobriety means watching and praying. You must find time to watch and pray. Sobriety means taking Jesus as the Alpha and Omega of your life. Before you begin, as you walk, and when you continue, Jesus should guide you. Sobriety means discriminating our appetite. We must not eat anything or do anything. I always say, friends, at times we push our children to things we did not grow up with. Some of us grew in some remote village that you have to go through four or five rivers, reach our home today. God has spared us a space in some urban dwellings. We must not lead our children to unfortunate appetites. I walked into a salon and a, 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 a room of, of fashion and I saw three heavy women 
pushing down some small four-year girl just because they were forcing some hair on her body aside. I am simply saying we have to discriminate what we see, what we eat, what we take, because that has some tendency of destroying of our sovereignty, trying and training up our children in God's way. Sobriety means stopping to push our children in a necessary fashion. Sobriety means, friends, putting your treasure in heaven where Jesus is the chief banker. When things fall apart, Jesus will sort you out. Sobriety means putting God first in all the aspects of your life. Brothers, be sober. It's the great call. Before I read these last words, allow me to invite you to stand wherever you are. Just stand wherever you are. As I read these last words, now read them with all kind of zeal because they are relevant and timely call for us. Young people who are listening to me, watching me and getting this message, before you say, yes, I do, be sober and never be yoked with non-believers. Youth have confused themselves before they walk into marriage. They can play some drama, but there is no drama in marriage. A reality of life, it can be the beginning of the end of your life. Someone once said that the choice of a life mate you take can mean you destruction or mean you well in the life tomorrow. I'm simply saying, before you say, yes, I do, be sober and do it right. Young people, today we are told so that you never ingia kwa box. And I have no problem mutu kuingia kwa box. My simply call is, before we ingia kwa box, just try to throw your eyes, check the box. If the box has no exit, then be sober, lest you walk in, suffocate and die. My working friends, when your pay rises from 100,000 to 200,000, be sober and store the increase in the right place. Where moth, where rust, where all the thieves will not be there. And that right place is in the kingdom of God. Oh yes, friends, when you go for study away from home, you who work with the county, you who are teachers, my fellow accountants, engineers or so, when the privilege of life takes you away from home and you go for team building, you go for some good work, be sober and know that you are married lest you kill your own family and destroy your entire marriage. When God blesses your children, the senior parents who are listening to me, when God lifts these children, they are in US, Australia, Nairobi, lead us there. Please be sober and guide them to invest in the kingdom of God. Should not you reject their gift before they give it to God. Friends, I will tell you, as you chat on social media, before you post anything, while you watch and enjoy, as you do your prayers, be sober, lest you lose your faith as you serve God. Be sober. That is the call for us, friends. Allow me to pray a prayer of a called sobriety. Father God in heaven, there is no better way to end this call than to pray for my friends who have stood up and listened to this call, a call that is speaking direct to me too, that we may choose to be sober and preserve the gifts you have given unto us for the life here and the life hereafter. Thank you, Father, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.